Hello and welcome to Rogue Artisans and Crafters, winner of the 2018 Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best Arts and Culture Show. I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Ninow. With Rogue Artisans and Crafters, we uh, like to feature and profile local artists here in Southern Oregon. We like to talk about their lives as artists, uh, their work as artists, their art process, their techniques, and what drives them as artists. And today we have as our guest, Janae Elder. Uh, I found uh, Janae a few months ago when I was starting to develop the show uh, and was impressed with her art that I found online. And she uh, exhibits her work at Art and Soul Gallery here in Ashland. So today we will uh, talk to Janae Elder about her work. And so we welcome Janae to the show. Hi, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So Janae, uh, uh, to begin with, uh, you know, I'll say that you're one of the uh, uh, youngest artists that I've featured on the show since I started the, the series. Uh, and, um, and so how long have you been working as an artist and what brought you to doing the art that you're doing today? Well, um, I've been painting and drawing for about 14 years. And um, I just made a decision that that's what I was going to do right. when I was about 19 years old. And so I sought out some training and um, learned how to draw, and I've been just painting and drawing ever since. Right. And uh, 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 for the training uh, process, where did you go? Did you take like local community courses or college courses, or, or was it like in high school? When did you get your, your training, per se? So um, after I graduated high school, I um, moved out here to Oregon to attend the Ashland Academy of Art. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's, it's no longer here. They right. moved it to uh, Maui. Yeah. But I attended there for four years and just spent um, my days learning how to draw, basically, yes. with right. models and casts and still life mm -hmm. and some painting, too, but, you know, it was mostly on yeah. drawing. Well, yeah, I mean, drawing is fundamental to everything else that you got to be doing. Yes, right. I, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, and so, uh, at what point did you uh, go decide to go professional, and how long have you been doing professionally uh, as an artist? Um, well, after, you know, it takes a really long time to build a voice and yes. to really even know what it means mm -hmm. to be an artist. Um, and uh, so after I attended the academy, I've, I've um, since then started a family. And um, I've spent the last, you know, I, a good five years just kind of experimenting right. um, with different mediums and different subject matter and really kind of deciding what it is that I liked and what, it, what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. um, and I've kind of ended up um, really enjoying plein air painting, yes. which is, um, doing um, live little paintings outdoors. Um, they're often finished like on the spot. Mm -hmm. And um, it kind of fits into my lifestyle yeah. since I, you know, I don't have you know, 50 hours a week to put into it um, right now. Right. Um, and it's really enjoyable because you get outdoors and it's just, it's just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, as I look at your work, I mean, you, 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 I see like kind of like an impressionistic style yeah. to a lot of the work that you do. Yeah, yeah, I love, um, I love impressionism. I'm very inspired by them. Um, French impressionism, the, the California impressionist movement is a big deal. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think it's really expressive and beautiful and poetic and. I'm glad that you could yeah. see that in my work. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, you know, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, impressionistic uh, style is, I would say that early in my life, it was something that I never really, like, understood or mm -hmm. really appreciated. But as I grew older in my life and kind of matured, it was like, I got to a certain point and I thought, oh, my God, there's some, like, really, that's, like, a really great style. Sure. You know? Yeah. And, it, and so it's something that... Uh, in my later life, I was like, I'm, it's something I've really gotten like really into. So uh, um, it's kind of cool to see local artists kind of getting into that and kind of exploring that as a style. Sure. Because um, it can be a really beautiful uh, uh, interpretation of whatever scene it is that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and and so the majority of the time that you're doing your plein air work, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
the majority of it you're you're like completing uh, a painting basically on site because I know that some artists kind of like kind of do like an initial setup on site sure and then kind of come back to their studio and kind of do final sure completion yeah well I really don't like to box myself in so I'm not gonna sit here and say oh I do all my work outside it has to be plein air mm -hmm. um, it's all about you know using all the tools available to you right. to really say something and to you know try to be poetic basically with visual language and um, that's you know that's really what I'm trying to do I, I do studio work I work still life um, out of my um, home studio mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, sometimes I work from a photograph it's really challenging <laughs> you would think it'd be easier but yeah they just never quite look as spontaneous or fresh for me so I'm still trying to figure that out but I absolutely will work from a photo right um, sometimes I'll go into a plein air sketch um, and then I'll take it home and, make, and rework it in the studio and make, make a bigger piece of art or statement mm -hmm. with it um, yeah so is there's different ways um, now when you start uh, the creation of a piece uh, do you have kind of like a pretty well-defined idea in your head as to how that's going to how that's going to turn out, or is it much more of a of a, you're kind of just uh, interpreting it as you go uh, in terms of your your creation process? I think um, you got to do both. I think you have to be spontaneous and like kind of feel the flow. Mm -hmm. Um, but then when you want to turn it into like a, you know, a polished piece of artwork, yes. you do want to plan. You want to yeah. take those little bits of inspiration um, that you get. Maybe it's in your sketchbook or, you know, a smaller plein air piece, something quick and spontaneous. And then you want to build uh, into a composition. Right. And that does take a little bit more planning. You, know, you want things to line up on the canvas a certain way. Um, and the more control, like I always tell my students, the more you can control your composition, the better you're going to be set up for success. Right. And now you've brought some examples here uh, to the studio. Yeah. Uh, kind of smaller kinds of pieces, but you, yeah. but you do larger kinds of pieces as well. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah I do some bigger studio pieces. Um, I have a funny story. I have this like giant five by four foot canvas just like sitting in my, <laughs> in my uh, studio and I was like what am I going to do this with do with it and I'm really tempted to go bring it and do like a giant plein air painting but yeah. that's just that's just crazy <laughs> <laughs> well there's nothing wrong with that crazy it might be it comes, fun yeah. yeah yeah it's um now when you when you were like in a plein air setting wherever you're look, yeah, because I because I've seen sure. examples of your work like done at the coast. Yes, and I've yeah. seen examples of your work done in like more kind of forested kinds of settings and mm -hmm. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, how long are you typically at a location uh, from when you like, you know, you you got your uh, your easel set and everything's ready to begin? Yes. I mean, is it like you know? I know that some artists that do this are like there for like several hours. Yes. And some will take like more kind of shorter kinds of lengths. So what's your typical kind of uh, period for, for starting a piece and kind of doing what you do? Um, well, it just depends on the painting and what the challenges are yeah. of each piece. Um, you know, if it's a smaller, more study piece, you know, like this little one here of Lithia Park. Yes. Um, you know, that's just an on the spot thing. You know, I'm would have liked more time. I would, you know, I always want more time. But I, I, I basically, I like to think of things in sessions. Um, and a session can typically be anywhere from two to five hours. Okay. And then each piece gets, you know, kind of a designated amount of sessions. Um, oftentimes it's one session if it's a small thing. You know, this other one here with the model. Yes. Um, that may have been two or three sessions just because there was new challenges. I brought a model out there and we were chasing light. This was like, yeah. you know, at the, what yes. do they call that? The lighting at nighttime? What is yeah, that? like the golden hour. The golden time. hour. Yeah. yeah, we were chasing the golden yeah. hour. So, you know, we yeah. had to go out there a couple nights to really. Right, yeah, because I, yeah. I have to deal with the same thing as a photographer. Yes, right? yeah. When, I'm, when you're doing, uh, when you're photographing a model or doing a portrait in, you know, you want that golden hour yes. kind of lighting effect. Yes, right. so it can depend on the light, yeah. um, you know, really 
it, it depends on the statement, I guess. Yeah. If you think of each piece as a statement. Um, yeah, because the sun has its own schedule, so you yes, can't, yeah. you know, you can't like <laughs> tell the sun, just stop here for another couple of minutes, please. You know, it just the time can go by really fast. Or I'm inspired now, <laughs> right now. Yeah. let's get to work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Funny. So, uh, so and typically, so you're dealing with you, so some pieces can be multiple kinds of sessions at a location. Mm -hmm. um, does the weather kind of be a uh, contributing factor to affecting your uh, your inspiration or you know your yes. technique? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There was um, this summer. I went. Uh, I woke up at like I don't know. I took my whole family to the coast, or we all went together, I should say. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna go paint from six to ten, and I'll be back. You know. And. You know, it took me a while. I got out there to, I think it was like Harris Beach, and I just had this great block in. I mm -hmm. mean, this painting, it had composition, it had color notes. It was like, there was overlap and distance. And it like, as soon as I'm like, this is going to be awesome, you know, 20 minutes in, and then the fog rolls in, yeah. and I can't see anything. Yeah, and I'm like, right. oh. So I had to like quickly like get over it and go and find a new location yeah. otherwise i was going to lose my little yeah right my little blip of time yeah which i did you know i found i went to the river and found a little you know a little spot and yeah. you know i may have been a little past 10. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you got to kind of work with the elements too so yeah. that just adds another interesting thing you know um you know as you know as an artist you're always want to kind of chase what what you're curious about or yeah. you're interested about mm -hmm. you know that maybe it's lighting or capturing you know some kind of you know atmospheric perspective or whatever it is you know mm -hmm. there's there's always a subject yeah. yeah yeah well we have uh i do have like a, a slideshow of some of your work okay that yeah. can, that the control room can bring up and we can talk about some of those uh pieces as well and uh so this is an example of like your still life kind of work. Yes, yeah, exactly. This was a studio piece done from life. Um, I really love sunflowers. I kind of connect with that subject. Um, yeah, is, and uh, and I see that in some of your still life work that there's a little bit more uh, uh, closer detail that comes through. Yes. In some of the pieces compared to like other more just simpler impressionistic kinds of work. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, they're more um, rendered. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's go on to the next. Sunflowers. I like sunflowers. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's nothing that. wrong with sunflowers. <laughs> yeah. Even photographers like sunflowers. Yeah. You know, it's well, a great just, subject. They're you know? kind of just happy. Yeah. This was a little um, summer-inspired piece. It was kind of warming up for a bigger painting. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on the next. Now I look at that and, and I see uh, a bit of inspiration from M. C. Escher, or am I wrong? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Because it's like you know, it's, you've got your a painting of uh, a painting being done sure. at a location, right? And, and then a photograph of yeah, it, and then yeah. a photograph on TV of it. Yeah. yeah so we have a, kind of like an M. C. Escher kind sure, of moment here. Yeah. You know? yeah. There we go. Yeah. All right. So that looks like a coastal kind of a scene. Yes. That was uh, that was in Hilo, uh, ah. Hawaii. Yeah, oh, lucky girl. Okay. Oh man, yeah, I'm trying to get back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a Harris Pe uh, Harris Beach. Right. Okay. Um, that was actually done from a photo. Okay. All right. Let's go on to the next. This was at the. I've, I've been participating in this lavender event up in Newburgh, Oregon. Yeah. Okay. Um. And this was a piece that I sent up there. This one as well. All right. Yeah, we have lavender. There's several lavender farms around in our in our region. Yes. You know, yeah. And, and they have like a lavender festival thing during the summer, right? And, yes. Yeah. yeah it, it it's at the same time as um, those festivals. Yeah. And until I started doing these shows, I had no idea that lavender was a thing around here. So. Yeah. Well, before I knew about that show, I never really thought to go paint it. Yeah. So. But now I have a bunch of work with lavender fields. Yeah. All right. This is Lithia Park. Yeah, okay. This is also Lithia Park. This is more that impressionistic style yeah. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. These are done pretty quickly, which is kind of nice. It 
bring something that more rendered stuff doesn't necessarily have. Yeah, you have well, you know, it's, uh, I find that a lot of, some of the impressionistic work that I see and that's kind of rendered or is done kind of quickly, there's, there's an energy that comes through. Yes. You know that can that can be seen. Yes, I agree, and that's I that's what I love. Those are the kind that's the kind of work I love is stuff that kind of vibrates yes. and is spontaneous and. Yeah. So let's go on to the next. This is a larger studio piece. That's Mount Shasta. Right. Okay. This was my best to show piece. <laughs> that's my daughter. She, I made uh, her model. Yeah. Her first time. She's, she kept saying, Mom, it looks great. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well. <laughs> looks great. Are we done? <laughs> there they are again. Those are yeah. my kiddos. Uh -huh. Well, it's always handy to have your own kids around to, to model. You sure, know? yeah, sure. I've even pulled my mother They're in great. front of the camera to, to, to model for me when I need to test oh, an idea and awesome. stuff. So, you know, well, they, it's always easy to have family around just to like drag them in and say, I need your help. Yes, you know? absolutely. <laughs> well, and as they get older too, they're more willing to sit still and yeah. 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 So these are these are commission pieces. Okay. Um, sometimes people um, will ask me to do a commission. Um, yeah. All portraits right. or otherwise. Yeah. That's Abel. Okay. This is a kind of interesting piece. I've never, I haven't really shown this to anybody. There, this was um. This is a little girl and her organ donor. Isn't oh, that sweet? And her mom yeah. said, "Can you do a painting with her donor as an angel above her?" And I was like, I was like, Shh, I'm, oh, I will, yeah. sure. So oh. I figured it out. This is, you know, it's different than yeah. my normal work, but I thought it'd be kind of interesting to share because. Um, yeah. Well, it's a great story, you know, and and uh, and it's a good way. That was, I, you know, understanding uh, the basis of the painting. It makes you. I think you did a good job of kind of like really interpreting that relationship. Sure. You know. Well, and then just painting it, you know, for. Yeah. yeah. So we're okay, and uh, and are we at the? Uh, I think we're near the end of the uh, slideshow. Oh, I think that's yeah. All right. And that looks like the that was like a commercial kind of a setting that you were depicting, right? It's yeah. my husband. Yeah, that's your husband. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's a chef, and so I said, "Can I come back there and take pictures?" Yeah. <laughs> Some reference photos. Right. I'm okay. so awful at taking pictures that it doesn't always work out, but I got lucky. Yeah. 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 Got a few good ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, now you talk about you you take the occasional commission. Mm -hmm. kind of, of assignment. Um, uh, how does someone go about contacting you to, to, to request that kind of a, of a project from you? Um, well, there's a contact form on my website. Right. That's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Um, okay. And that's what, JanaeElder.com, correct? Yeah. yeah? Okay. <laughs> JanaeElder.com. Yeah. I've got more yeah. artwork and um, I post my upcoming classes. And yeah. And uh, so what's the general price range for a commission piece that someone wants to hire you to do a project? Um, well, for the really little paintings, I start them at about $300. Right, okay. Um, and then it goes, it, it increases from there. Mm -hmm. Anything large, you know, is going to be 800 or more. Right. Which is, you know, I'm slowly raising my prices as we go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that is uh, nothing wrong with that. I mean, as you're... Uh, as your reputation continues to grow and you get more recognition for your talent and, and, your, and your work, uh, then, you know, your, your prices should be reflective of that. So yes. So nothing wrong with that, actually. Yeah. And hopefully this little show can help increase that yeah. for you. They're going to uh, double. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that was last the, week. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the effect that that being a featured artist on Rogue Artisans and Crafters wow. can do for you. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, um, uh, so typically, you know, we've talked about how uh, when you start uh, uh, a project that, uh, uh, that you know, the, the time involved mm -hmm. um, for, for most of your plein air work, is that similar, is that time involved also Similar to like when you're doing the more detailed kind of like life uh, 
kind of a, of a scene, mm -hmm. um, or is it, or do things get a bit longer involved in the in the art process? With the still life, yeah, with the still yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, they they typically take a little longer than um, a plein air piece. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe, like I was saying, I like to think of things in sessions, and yeah. so you know, it may just depend on what I'm trying to say. Uh, but yeah, between like three and four sessions probably on a still right. life. Um, and, and where do you find your inspiration? Where does your inspiration mostly come from for the ideas that, that come to you and say, oh, I gotta do that? Well, that's a really interesting question and that's, um, that's something that I'm really trying to be in tune with. Um, part of it is listening um, to inspiration, things that might inspire you and just kind of being aware of um, things in your life that can, you know, tug at your heart a little yeah. or um, make you pause for a moment and just kind of appreciate it. And then, you know, I try to write these things down yeah. and kind of keep track of things that um, are inspiring or just, yeah, just listening, mm -hmm. listening in for those things. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does <laughs> could make, for, to me because it's like... Uh, you know, I have a pretty creative mind, I feel like, and, mm -hmm. and I get a lot of ideas flowing through this head of mine at times. Yes. But I find that if I'm not writing things down, mm -hmm. uh, I can lose the idea yeah. so fast. And, and then it's like something tugs at the back of my mind going, what was that idea? Sure. Right? So, you know, writing down, uh, I, I live my life off of index cards. Yeah, you interesting. Know? And yeah. so I'm constantly like, writing things down and kind of organizing my ideas. And, I think you, know, you have to. Yeah. Once you start getting a flow of them, they'll keep you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll bother you. You know, yeah. you just kind of write it down. It could sit there, and then anything that's really worth exploring will kind of um, come to the surface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I think there's a you got to be kind of sensitive to to you know your the environment around you yes. uh, to get the creativity going and flowing. Absolutely. Right. And for the ideas to kind of come out. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're down to about the last five minutes, it looks like. All right. Yeah. So, um, so uh, in general, uh, uh, people can find your work online at your website, mm -hmm. which is at JanaeElder.com. Yes. All right. And they can find your work at Art and Soul Gallery here in Ashland. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and uh, how often are you kind of like, because I, I make it into the gallery uh, as often as I can. Mm -hmm. How often are you kind of like replenishing your display there? Uh, I think they do, maybe it's like every, oh, sorry, gals. I think it's every two months. I yeah. can't, I, you know, I can't recall exactly. It's either. That sounds it's not, about right, based on when I yeah, had a. Two months or yeah, three months, maybe even. Yeah, when I, because yeah. I seem to recall it's kind of like that when I was, when I had a. Linda Hoffman Snodgrass yes, on yeah. a few months ago. She we would know. About yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, she, <laughs> when Linda tells me to, I bring down the new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, yeah. No. Listen to what she, Linda tells you. Yeah. yeah. I think it's every two or three months. Yeah. You just, you, and, and it's optional. We get to kind of display it how we'd like there, which mm -hmm. is really nice. So. And I seem to recall that just with, within the last three or four months, you had you were like a featured artist there, as I recall. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah because I saw that uh, display when uh, when that was going on. So, I mean, that was that's one of the, that's one of how I kind of found you. First, I found you online, just searching for local artists mm -hmm. uh, for potential uh, features on the show, uh, just when I was just starting the series, and then uh, found your uh, your work at Art and Soul Gallery. And seeing it in person, I was just like so impressed uh, with the with the quality of what I was seeing. I was thinking, oh, I gotta get this uh, uh, artist on uh, on my show. And when I discovered uh, 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 how young you were, because I mean, you're like the second you're you're really you're like the second youngest person I've had among featured artists on the show. Who and was the Who was the? I had a young artist, artist from Klamath Falls named Anadia Chan, who does like anime style kinds of comic work. <laughs> And she's like 19, you know. And when uh, I'm 20. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I was just so impressed uh, at the maturity of, of the quality of work that I was seeing. Yeah, 19, and, that's great. You know, that's, I mean, that's when I 
started yeah. really trying to take it serious. I had a book from Amazon called uh, Fill Your Oil Paintings with Light and Color. Yeah. And I still um, thumb through that book. It's, <laughs> it's really a good one. Yeah. So it's uh, so I'm really grateful for you to come on and to talk about your work. We you mentioned my classes. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's right. We, you do instructional classes. Yes. And uh, you do those both in Ashland and elsewhere, as I understand, correct? Yes, yeah. I've done some in Ashland with the Ashland Art Center. Um, uh, my most recent class that's coming up is at RCC. I'm, yes. a, I'm doing portrait drawing, and um, hopefully maybe we'll get into some painting classes. But okay. it's the continued education courses with right. RCC. Yes. Um, and that's really cool. Um, I've been bringing in my big plaster cast yeah. for models, and um, <clears throat> that's over in Medford. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, and what's the typical uh, uh, price for getting into one of your classes? Well, geez, the RCC one is really affordable. It's, I think it's like it was like seventy-five dollars or oh, something for okay. that class. But um, in different settings, um, like through the art center and stuff, usually it's you know a couple hundred dollars right. okay. to get take like a workshop style class. Yeah. And how long are the class sessions typically? Are they like you know three or four types of sessions, or are they longer? Or? About. Usually, generally, the, a class is three hours. Um, the RCC class is approximately two hours. Okay. So it's a little shorter. All right. And then hopefully, you get to do some like plein air classes next summer. I need to plan that. I've done fun stuff where yeah. we, we'll take a model out, you know, to Lithia Park and paint. And, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, where are we at on the time here? Wrap. Okay. All right. Well, thank yeah. you, Jordan, for coming yeah. on. Thank you for having uh, me. Yeah. And so this concludes uh, our episode uh, with Janae Elder. And I want to thank her for coming on. I want to thank my crew for helping uh, produce the show. And, uh, and you can watch our show on RVTV. Uh, and I have so many shows, I can't remember what time slots I have for this show. So they can, <laughs> if Control Room can put up a, a lower third for that, that would be great. Because I don't have my teleprompter going on today. So that doesn't help me any. So uh, I wish you all... A great, uh, yeah. a great uh, day, and we will see you next time on Rogue Artisans and Crafters. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, no, it's like, you know. I wish to thank you for watching Rogue Artisans and Crafters. And watch this program on demand by visiting rvtv.sou.edu. You can also follow our show on Facebook by visiting and liking our official show page. Just search for Rogue Artisans and Crafters. You can follow me, David Glamour Dave Nino, online at my YouTube channel, and on Facebook. If you like this show and wish to support me in my show productions at RVTV, you can visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash glamour Dave. You can watch this show on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. and Thursday evenings at 11.30 p.m. We want to thank our crew who have made it possible to put this program together. Producer and host David Glamour Dave Nino is winner of the 2018 Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best New Producer and for Best Arts and Culture Show for Rogue Artisans and Crafters.